Welcome back, everybody. What I'm going to do uh, this morning is I'm going to pull this axle housing off this uh, parts Gibson chassis. And um, so I can uh, assess the brake band in there. Now, I already know the liner is probably going to be asbestos, so I won't use that. But if the brake band itself is good, uh, I'll salvage that because um, I got to clean this up out here. I got to run the gauntlet every time I walk through there. What a mess. Because, as we saw in the previous video that I posted, this this brake band is rusted out. Um, I can make a new brake band. That's not an issue. But if I can uh, save some time, there's only six bolts. Wait a minute. One, two, three, four, five. Six bolts that hold that axle housing on. And it slides right off. Uh, and then I can get right to the brake band. Uh, that'll save me some time if the brake band itself is good. If it's looking like it's pretty crusty, then I'll wind up making a new one. I'm not going to film taking that axle housing off because the wind's picking up and the audio will just be horrible and nobody likes listening to wind noise. So I'll bring you back when I get that unbolted and up here on the bench. Well, this does not look promising at all. We've had critters in there. And that brake band is looking awfully crusty. It's got a lot of liner left on it, which, but that doesn't matter because that's asbestos anyway. But darn the luck. I think, though, since this is more complete and unbroken. I'm going to go ahead and pull the band out and use it as a pattern to make the new one. Um, oh, and oh, by the way, I forgot to mention in the last video, um, this uh, axle, you know, is uh, drilled in the end and the brake drum has cast slots in it for a puller. So um, I was lucky. I was just able to tap on the shaft and the brake drum came right off. But um, uh, what was I going to say? Losing my mind. I'm an old man. Uh, anyway, uh, but if, you know, any of you are working on these and yours is a little stuck, well, it's all set up for a puller. So, yeah, that would make the job a whole lot easier. Anyway, I got some cleanup to do, and uh, oh, I'm going to show you. Hang on, maybe a little wind noise. Let's see if I can get out of here between gusts. A little windy. Larry, if you're watching, the inside of this differential actually looks better than the one in your tractor. Uh, I do see some chipping on the ring gear, but um, yeah, something to consider. Anyway, this is still a good rear end, so um, we might want to fill that back up with oil and spin it once in a while in your storage area just, you know, to keep it viable. Yeah. This uh, brake dog pivot in here is pretty stuck. So I'm going to try and get it loosened up. A little liquid wrench. Give that a few minutes. Also, right here. This stud sticking up, there's a nut on it. I gotta loosen that off, and that'll release tension on the brake band. And then I'm going to um, attempt to pull this drum off. <laughs> Notice this drum 
does not have the uh, slots cast in it for a uh, puller, which tells me this is an older rear end than the one that's in Larry's tractor. Obviously, they had some issues with getting brake drums out, and so later models, they decided to put those slots in it for a puller. That's a guess on my part. Can't back that up with facts. Hey, it's a good guess. Noise alert! On this particular uh, brake adjuster, the nut is 13 sixteenths. Murphy Law, if you're watching, tell me what the metric equivalent is down in the comments. So, this particular parts Gibson went through a nasty fire. My friend Larry lives down in Ash Canyon, about six miles from the Mexican border, and in 2011 the Monument Fire broke out, because that's near the, um, I can't remember the name of it, National Monument down there. Anyway, big fire broke out. Larry and many of his neighbors got burned out. Well, this Gibson was uh, one of the casualties. So, sitting outside all these years after going through a fire, Things are a bit crusty, if you know what I mean. So, I'm going to do some uh, tapping with a hammer here and uh, get this brake band loosened up on this drum, and then I'll bring you back. Just about there, just about there. Okay, I don't know if you can see, but the way this works is this um, brake band, uh, there's a dog right there that I'm touching with the light. The pin that runs across the brake band hooks in that dog. And then this uh, lug here that I just uh, took the nut off, when that you pull that up, that applies tension, uh, the brake band applies tension to the drum. There's a lever right here that's got a rod going to the foot pedal, and uh, that's it's a very basic, simple uh, pinch system. But anyway, I've got to uh, uh, slip this down off that dog so I can get the whole brake uh, assembly out. And I've already, as you can see, it's wet in there. I soaked that really good with uh, WD-40 again because that's asbestos. I don't want to mess with that stuff, you know. I um, I had my an uncle, my mom's oldest brother. I watched him die slowly for 15 years from asbestosis. Nasty stuff. <clears throat> don't even want to go there. So, um, yeah, enough about that. Oh, and yeah, if you're... Uh, Hearing wind noise in the shop. Cooler's running again, which is probably something you're going to hear all summer long. Because, you know, what are we today? Uh, not quite as bad as yesterday. What is that, 84? Instead of 90? And I think that's our high for the day, so... We can live with that. Now, people huh, from the northern climes would say, geez, Matt, 90 degrees, and you're calling that comfortable? Well, remember, we run 
6 to 10 percent humidity during the day. So 90 degrees, you know, feels cooler than 80 degrees with 80 percent humidity where I'm originally from in the Pacific Northwest. Feels much better down here. But hey, you you don't give a rip about my weather conditions here. You want to see me work on this Gibson axle. Well, maybe you don't even want to see me do that, but that's what I'm doing today. So, hey, all right, I'll shut up and get back to work. All right, it's out. A uh, bit of a struggle, but I got it out. Um, I was hoping this lug would be in better shape. Threads are really stripped on it. I don't know if I run a die over that, if there'll be enough left. Um, I'll try and save it because, as you can see, the original one is a little worse for wear than that one. I mean, worst case scenario, I'll make a new lug. And I have to remember, whatever lug I make, i got to make sure that flat spot is on the inside because that's what goes around the brake drum. Um, <clears throat> this is the dog that I was talking about, and the there's a lever or a rod that hooks to this bottom hole and goes to the foot pedal. Uh, maybe this will be a little better demonstration here, but um, this is what actuates the brake band around the drum. As you step on the pedal, uh, it um, I can't remember if it pushes or pulls, but anyway, you get the idea. That's what applies the tension. This is the adjuster. If you... Um, tighten the nut it pulls it in that direction and uh, wraps the band a little closer around the drum um, and then when you work the foot pedal this this is what uh, really puts on the brakes so anyway um, unfortunately this band is probably pretty close to breaking itself it's sad and moisture and, and piles of dirt and crap and um, you know, that's going to rust it out. Um, these, this is not the best design. Um, this is an open cavity. And, you know, your your rear wheel mounts here, you know, as you're, as you're spinning along, dirt and water and mud and whatever is going to make its way into this cavity right into the brake drum. So that's a design flaw with these Gibson rear ends. Um they're prone for that, and of course, that's what destroys brake bands. Okay, um, I think I'm going to wrap it up here. The workbench is getting pretty, pretty trashed. And I got a bunch of tools I got to clean, put away. Uh, the next video, we will start making the new brake band and possibly a new lug as well. We'll just see how that goes. Um, the liner material I can obtain online through McMaster Car including the rivet set and the rivet tool. Um, I might shop around a little more. McMaster car, I know the quality is good, but the price is also a little spendy. And, uh, and of course, shipping as well. So um, anyway, we'll see how that goes. But I'm going to stop here. That's enough. You guys have seen enough of this for today. And uh, the manufacturing of the brake band should be fun. Thanks for watching. We'll see you later.